Uh, Steve, people will know you as a comedian and as an actor and as an ambassador for the Irish Wheelchair Association. But you didn't always use a wheelchair. No, in 2005 I made the decision, stupid decision, to drink and drive and uh, got on my motorbike and crashed and killed my passenger and friend, John. So. So obviously that is uh, life changing in all in all mm. sorts of ways. Um, well, people that look at me and just go, "Well, karma," and I kind of agree with them as well. Like that's that's my cross the bear. That's I did it. So. So what injuries did you actually get in, uh, in that accident? I broke my neck and my back and a couple of other bones, but serious spinal injuries. So. Okay, but as you say, the, the the worst part of this obviously was what happened to your friend. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, you did go before the courts uh, on yeah. a dangerous driving causing death charge. Yeah. What was the outcome of that? Uh, I got, I think it was two years suspended for four. And the judge just said that he'd rather me out there as a, as a physical example of what not to do and to not drink drive. So like, it, it, an accident like that really changes your perspective on, on life and possibly making the worst decision you can in your life. Like when you're sitting up in the National Rehab Hospital and you're paralysed from the, the chest down and you're naked and a man is showering you or avoiding your bowels, like that'll really help you reevaluate the decisions you've made in your life. And I came up with three. One was to kill myself. One was, the other one was to drink myself to death. And the third one was to try and redeem myself. So I'm here to do that. Living with the fact that it was your decision that led to the death of your friend. How, do you, how did you deal with that? What impact has that had on you? Uh, Jesus, as you can imagine, it's, I hid it and I was ashamed of it and embarrassed by it and I still am, obviously, but I'm a different person now than the 23-year-old the with, with uh, a drinking issue. So I'm a, I'm a different person and I'm glad to say as well, I'm, fr I'm now friends with John's uh, son, Thomas, and I'm great friends with his wife as well. So it was kind of, they're, they're bigger people than I could ever be to kind of take me in and... People would be very surprised that you've mm. managed to build this relationship yeah. with, with John's widow and yeah, his they, son. Like it, I think it was 15 years after the crash that I finally met his son. Well, I met him at the court, but I was, I was away with the fairies. I was just too nervous that day. But I met him when we were doing the documentary for TG Carr and... It was it was kind of a weight off my shoulders when he just goes, well, it wasn't your fault, like, you know, and I was kind of like, Jesus, you know, so I still blame myself, obviously, Jesus, I was driving the bike, but to hear that from him kind of really changed my perspective on things, and he was like, keep doing what you're doing and keep out there and keep talking about it and show the people that, I suppose, the side from the, the idiot's point of view, the person that did it. We know that there are still idiots out there, if yeah. we put it that way. Mm. We know that alcohol and drugs remain a factor, at least, in about 37% of fatalities. Yeah. So what do you say to those people tonight? Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. You, like, but like, like me as well, it'll be probably too late until you're like paralysed from the neck down in the hospital, in the National Rehab Hospital, or dead. So, yeah, it'll fuck up your life. What would have changed you? What would have would changed your behaviour? What might have worked for you? I thought about this numerous times. My brother once asked me, what do you think would have happened if you didn't crash the bike that weekend? And I said, I probably would have crashed it the next weekend. So there was, the only thing that would have stopped me is death or what happened. Because I was, but then again, I was reckless and I had, a, I had an aside from that with a drinking issue. So it wasn't just road uses, let's say. So, yeah, it's hard to know what would, what would, like apart from me, what would change, whether it's speed limits or, like, uh, like I said to the researcher on the phone, I says, whatever the Scandinavians are doing, copy them, because they, they seem to be way ahead of the game on every social issue we have in Western Europe. We do know that uh, in the vast, vast majority of cases, it's men that are behind the wheel. Yeah, in, 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 yeah. In, yeah. Men, the age I was, 18 to 25, exactly, that, they, in that they, kill, they, don't, they only, not only kill themselves, but they tend to wipe out three, four people in a car or, you know, messing. And uh, like, it's, it's awful hard to cut out that. It's awful hard. How do, you, 
how do you how do you cut down on a, a, a a late teenager's ego or bravado or you know what that's how do you how do you regulate for that it's very hard to regulate for something like that okay steve thank you very much no for problem. coming in and talking to us about that tonight